All right, assalamu alaikum everybody. We're here with Miguel. Uh, we are very excited to be speaking with him and learning about his experiences. Miguel, welcome, assalamu alaikum. Alaykum assalam. Hello everybody. Um, yeah, glad to be here. Um, I've been uh, around the faith for quite a few years now, if I'm not mistaken, since 2013. Um, you know, so I've had some ups and downs and uh, some family experiences and some, you know, so some typical hardships that I think most people with culture clashes experience. Um, but um, it's your interview, so you got the questions. Uh, lay them on me. All right, wonderful. So tell us about your first Ramadan. What were some of your expectations going in? What ended up being a reality? What were some surprises? My, fir my first Ramadan was actually before Islam. I was actually, uh, I did it as a, uh, a support for a coworker who was Muslim. It still is a Muslim, I should say. Um, <clears throat> he was uh, fasting and I was asking about, you know, what, what's his fasting business all about? And uh, he tried to explain it to me and I didn't understand anything. Um, he gave me, a, gave me a copy of the Quran to read. Um, I didn't read it. I, at the time, I was, um, I was just doing the fasting, the no eating, no drinking, but I still wasn't praying. Um, but but I, I did, I did want to see what it was like to, uh, to, to actually not eat or drink or go through the feelings, or at least that were being described to me by my coworker, um, feeling humbled, uh, feeling um, yeah, more appreciative. And I did, um, so I didn't expect much going in except that I was going to be hungry. But then I found that um, during the process, uh, which the, for the first two or three days uh, was really difficult. And then after I got into the routine um, of uh, waking up really, really early and, and uh, for that for super early breakfast, I think it's called Suhoor, um, <clears throat> the, uh, I started noticing some changes in, my, uh, in the way my brain works, I think, the way, uh, the way that the day actually started well and it actually got well. I, I was able to focus more and, and a lot of uh, some people I think consider the little miracles. I found more time in my day to get things organized and done. And I started to, well, my eyes started to open a little bit to maybe, maybe this, um, maybe not the religion itself, but some of the, the, the regiment, uh, the regimented aspects of it uh, may actually be beneficial for my health. So that was actually one of my, my first, my intro. Um, so I was actually more intrigued by the daily prayers and uh, the health benefits associated with the motions, the body motions. Um, so, so for my second Ramadan, which was actually my first after my Shahada, um, I, I had incorporated the, um, the actual Islam into it. Um, but I don't know if I've sidetracked too much, uh, Munir, catch me if I have, I, I can ramble. Um, but the, uh, my expectation, uh, my expectations for the, the set, the, my second Ramadan, um, were a lot higher. I didn't want to miss any prayers. Um, but then it was, uh, it's a little difficult because I didn't know the words and whatnot. So for the, my, my second Ramadan I actually kind of sat in place and just, um, waited uh, a special pre preset number of seconds while I, uh, you know, my, my examples were going to the, to the mosque, which will, we'll get to a little later because that uh, was, uh, was an interesting experience. I'm not sure if it's one of the questions, but maybe we could squeeze that experience in. Well, go ahead and tell us about it right now. Tell us about your Shahada oh. experience. Okay. Well, before my Shahada, because that, uh, um, that was actually, I think, believe you orchestrated that, Munir. Um, <clears throat> the, um, there was a particular mosque in the city that I lived in. I don't want to put them on blast, but uh, I actually... Um, walked in unannounced, um, stepped on the carpet with my shoes on and all these other things that probably upset some folks. And uh, I, my, my first actual Islam experience from, from real Muslims, so to say, um, was being uh, yelled at in, in a foreign language and uh, told to leave the building because of, uh, I guess, my behavior or something or another. Um, I, I didn't understand. It was in a foreign language, and all I was doing was looking to, for a pamphlet or maybe some more information on how to pray or, you know, what, what Islam was all about, or maybe just, just sit down and speak with somebody to um, see if my, uh, well, to see if my ideals kind of lined up with the religion's ideals and whatnot, and I, that didn't happen. And uh, I went to uh, their website, complained, and uh, I found you, Munir, and then I... Uh, led me to the, uh, the Talif Collective, uh, 
I'm not mistaken, you said that was the place where the beginners go or something, something to that effect. And uh, well, here we are today, uh, still practicing. Um, the uh, <clears throat> so so real life changing events, but it was it wasn't it wasn't easy uh, because after actually I was um, I was almost turned away from the fold because of the initial treatment. I figured, well, if this is how if this is how the pious people treat people, then maybe I don't want to be one of these. And I'm really glad that I uh, investigated further because I couldn't have been further from the truth. Very sorry about that unfortunate beginning experience, but alhamdulillah that uh, you were able to find a community. And that's what I would like to talk about. Uh, what were your experiences like with the community during that first Ramadan? Were there positive, negatives? Well, um, with the actual community at, at Talif, um, it was, everything was great um, because they, well, they were so welcoming. They gave me um, a Quran, a prayer, a, a prayer mat, um, some some instructions, some guidance, uh, people to call, um, you know, websites that I could go to um, if I was feeling uh, different or wanted to wanted to just read up or or just kind of see, you know, how to take the baby steps into Islam. So that all that helped. the The difficult the difficult parts were um, were introducing the idea to my family, um, which have been were. Are and, and are predominantly uh, Christian Catholic um, mix, um, so there aren't very many Muslims in my family, a primary family or extended family. Um, so it was really, and then this was, um, I mean, we're we're after. I mean, we're we're in 2013, but still uh, the the stigma that that um, that 9/11, uh, I guess, brought. Um, so in in 2001 uh, to my family members who were a little who uh, we I was younger then but um, they they still carried the stigma uh, and, and thought that I was joining a cult or, or or any any other type of terrorist organization so I had to overcome um, being called a terrorist uh, being called a sympathizer yeah you know, just some pretty ignorant claims um, so so I, I did eventually. Um, I think I overcame this uh, with my family, not not by arguing with them, but by simply just practicing my Islam. And then eventually they just accepted me for who I was. I never spent any time trying to convert anyone in my family, nor, nor do I spend very much time trying to convert many people. I find that the religion almost speaks for itself. And most people ask me, um, what is it um, about you? And I, I find it's easier to give dawah that way. Um, than, than to try to change someone's mind. I just, I let them take the first step and you know, the same thing happened with, with my family. They, they, they're, not, they're not Muslim, but they're totally accepting now. Uh, it only took a few years, but um, it, was, it was tough um, being, being the black sheep in the family for the years. And sometimes it still feels like it, but every, everyone uh, treats me a lot better now. Alhamdulillah, glad to hear that. Uh, so you had eight Ramadans, seven of which we were a Muslim. Uh, what do you look forward to now um, in Ramadan? Well, to be to be honest, I actually, uh, and not to say that I haven't been up to, to this point, I just, um, the, the first thing that I, I really gravitate to um, as far as, as far as Ramadan is, I actually enjoy the, um, I guess some people have described that, the suffering of the first few days of the fast. I, I like the challenge of being able to um, just stop eating and drinking cold turkey and then just purely telling myself it's because of my fear of God um, that I have the ability to just stop doing something at, that's been trained for 11 months. Um, so I like to challenge my ability to do this. Um, so, so I look forward to that moment and, and I, I look forward to every morning um, every new morning, uh, with the same, with the same idea that, you know, I'm, I'm not, people are going to offer me food and water and, and tease me and say, Hey, uh, come have lunch with us and all these things. And I look forward to each opportunity to tell myself, no, no, thank you. No, no, thank you. And, and, and I find that I, more and more when, when I get challenged like that, that I tell myself that it's not, that I'm not the reason I'm doing this, that I'm doing this for something greater than me. And I find it's easier to quit things um, during this month than, than any other month, actually. 
Um, I can put the Xbox down. I can just put all sorts of frivolous things down uh, during this month. And I'm, I'm finding, uh, I mean, at least I, I, I read that that's because all the, the, the devils are locked up. So that, that probably has something to do with it. But um, I, I think I look forward to the challenge, the actual challenge of, of, of not eating or drinking and then uh, just pushing myself. So that's, that's what I really look forward to. For Ramadan, but I also use them as I use these moments as opportunities to reconnect with my faith. Um, especially uh, right right now, I've I experienced a pretty traumatizing life event that I'd not like to go into too much detail about. But that's sort of broken my daily prayers routine, and I'm using this Ramadan to just get back on track and hopefully to stick with it in the end. <laughs> uh, so, Miguel, as a convert, do you have any advice to any newer Muslims out there who are currently experiencing their first Ramadan? Actually, uh, yes. Um, the sometimes the first the first reaction some converts want to and, and, and I don't want to speak for everybody, but I, I went through these phases. I either wanted to really, 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 really prove other people wrong, or I really, really, really wanted to just be quiet and take the abuse. Um, I don't suggest you take any of those paths. Try to find the common middle. You know, um, for example, you know, you don't need to hand peck your parents if they disagree um, with uh, your ideals or the ideals that you've um, chosen chosen to follow. Um, but but you don't necessarily need to to, to isolate yourself from them as well. Um, so you um, you can still be Muslim and their child. Um, you don't have to um, dishonor your parents by trying to uh, prove them wrong about their faith, or maybe they'll just come along in time, or if they don't, they don't, but they're still your parents, and you still have to honor them in all other, in all other manners. Um, just if they're advising you away from the faith, um, then you can distance yourself from them, but um, still honor your parents, regardless of the distance. Um, and I think if you apply the same concept to friends and extended family, that yeah, you should, you shouldn't, you shouldn't go wrong, really. That's beautiful. Thank you for all the insight and sharing your your story with us, Miguel. We really appreciate that, and uh, continue to have a blessed Ramadan in these last ten days. Jazakallah. Yeah. All right. Assalamu.